Second Corinthians 13 through 15 says, for such men are false prophets, deceitful workmen, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if the servants masquerade as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve. If you were on this channel, then you probably understand that right now we are in the most intense spiritual battle humanity has ever faced. And if you are on this channel, you also probably know that there is a lot of deceit and there are forces working that our human eyes sometimes can't see. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very special thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, we would not be able to do what we do. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce. And today on Mystery Monday, we are going to be talking about the Grand Grimoire. Now, I debated on whether or not to continue to do these missing, dark, dangerous books on the playlist of Mystery Monday or to create a whole new playlist for all of these books we're going to go through. However, I decided to keep them on the Mystery Monday playlist because magic for a lot of us is still very much a mystery. In fact, in ancient religions, there were such things as mystery schools where people would learn the powers of the universe. A lot of us have a misunderstanding of what these mystery schools were. And I do want to remind you guys, as I often do on every episode, that everything that the darkness uses was at one point created by the light. Even in basic science, even in high school biology, we learn the power of photosynthesis because you see the darkness literally can't create anything. It can only take and steal from the light. In all of the Apocryphon books that were banned from the Bible, we see this explained. Again, Apocryphon means a secret teaching. And in these books, it's clear that the reason why Lucifer has to ask for the rituals and ceremonies that he does involving humans and animals is because he has to continue to feed off of that divine spark, the divine spark that is within all of us, because that is the one thing that Lucifer cannot create. And because Lucifer cannot create his own divine spark, he's constantly having to be refed. And for those who are willing to participate in these kinds of rituals, they have to continually provide this nourishment for their master. Of course, Lucifer gives them things in return for feeding him, but it always comes at a price. As most of you know, I, for one, have been at the receiving end of black magic. And this is definitely not something to take lightly. I haven't even mentioned half of the things that I've been through regarding this type of spell work. And one day when all of this is over, I do intend to talk about everything when I'm ready to talk about everything. And no, I will not be mentioning any names on my channel for many reasons. First of all, my safety is at stake. And hopefully one day when I'm able to talk about literally everything that's happened to me, you guys will understand why my safety is at stake. These powerful witches are still out there running around freely, continually doing their magic. So for now, I and many others who are also targets of these covens have to play it very smart. I also don't believe that you need me to tell you who these people are because you, like me, have a divine connection to source. You have your gut instinct. And as long as you're listening to your gut, you will be fine. Ask God to show you who these people are. Ask God to point them out to you, and he will. I only bring up this information because knowledge is power. For a long time, I think a lot of us were very ignorant to just how dark evil is. And I do believe that my friend Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa is correct. The more we raise our vibration, the harder it is for these people to attack. They will still attack. However, we just keep rising up. 
Now, last week on Twitter, I posted a really, really good in-depth video created by JCK down in Australia, another spiritual truther in our community. I'm going to link that video down below in this description box as well. I highly suggest that everybody listen to it. She does a really really good job describing everything that is happening within these covens. As she says, 90% of our media is infiltrated, our mainstream media. What makes us think that the same thing isn't happening in the truther community as well? These demonic players are a lot of things, but stupid is not one of them. Our earth has to ascend. It has to go from third density to fourth density. It's time. The only thing is when it goes from a third density to fourth density, it will either go fourth density positive or fourth density negative. In third density, we have the power of polarity. There's always darkness and light. This is a ground, a school for the beings on these planets to decide which path they're going to take which level they're going to graduate to. Are they going to go into the positive or into the negative? This, of course, takes many, many, many lives of learning and deciding. And the soul, from what I understand from the law of one, does have to be a particular age to even be eligible to graduate into fourth density. This is where we are right now in our timeline. This is the predicament that we are in with Mother Nature. Now, yes, it's true. If you are a student of the law of one, most of us, a lot of us, came back down into third density bodies from fourth, fifth, or sixth density existence. We've already ascended. And the reason why we decided to come back down through the veil of amnesia to a lower density body is to help humanity push the earth into the positive polarity. However, just as the light sent down people to help push the earth into the positive polarity, the darkness also sit down souls to help push the planet into the negative polarity. Now, according to a lot of the prophecies, according to the law of one, even the Cassiopeians say that the probability of us going positive is really high, almost impossible for the darkness to hijack. However, they will start to try to hijack. And if we rest on our laurels, then there is that slight chance and possibility they could swing it negative. And that is why it is the responsibility for every single one of us to do our due diligence, to work on ourselves, to heal ourselves, to love each other, to stand up for what is right. This is not the time for us to sit back and eat popcorn. That's what the darkness wants you to do so that you stop fighting. Now, I believe that it is not totally necessary for us to have a really in-depth understanding of black magic. We just have to understand it enough to know what it is and to understand that it is real. And by understanding that it is real, we have a better chance of putting up boundaries and protecting ourselves and raising our vibration so we're not affected by it. So they're basically swinging at dead air. And this has been true in spiritual warfare since the beginning. Many, many people who have been in this spiritual battle have studied demonology in order to understand how the other side works. Demonology is the study of demons, the hierarchy of demons. Angelology is the study of angels. And as you'll see, they mirror each other. Where there is a Michael, there is one demon. Where there is a Gabriel, there is another demon to match that Gabriel. Demonology is an occult science. And again, all the word occult means is also just hidden knowledge. It's the understanding of complex rituals to summon demons. It's the understanding of knowing what these demons' symbols and signs are. It's also the understanding of how these black witches and warlocks used the summoned demons to do their bidding. Just like in the opening video, where many people believe he who shall not be named, because it's YouTube, was actually commanding a demon. Just like we know King Solomon did, just like we're assuming King David did. The darkness will lie to you. The darkness will love bomb you and charm you to your face, put you in a place of confusion. And as we're starting to see, even these biblical characters like Solomon that we were taught to venerate and respect were part of the dark cult. They were part of Satanism. 
And so demonology itself is at the heart of spiritual warfare. For the dark side, it's a way to control. And for the light side, it's a way to understand the enemy. Of course, we understand, especially if you're on this channel, that there are many missing books from the Bible. From our understanding, allegedly, there were supposed to be 777 books in the biblical canon. We only have 66 books. And of those 66 books, we know that most of them have been changed and manipulated over time. One of these missing books is called the Testament of Solomon. Now, the last couple of weeks, we have been diving into King Solomon and his two other grimoires, his spell books, the Keys of Solomon and the Lesser Key of Solomon. If you missed those two episodes, I will place them down in the description box below. Now, because the dark controllers also control the Vatican and also control all the sects of Christianity, not to mention all the other religions, it is no wonder to me that the Testament of Solomon was removed from the Bible. They wanted our energy, our respect to venerate these sorcerers because it was known and is still known by the Freemasons that Solomon was one of the greatest sorcerers to ever live. And this is clear in the Testament of Solomon. In the Testament of Solomon, he describes how he summoned demons to build a temple. Again, the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was held, the temple where they participated in sacrifices, and the temple that looks identical to the Freemason lodges today. The Testament of Solomon also allegedly tells you how to summon demons, just like in the Lesser Key of Solomon, the Keys of Solomon, and as we're going to discuss in a minute, the Grand Grimoire, the Mac Daddy of all of Solomon's spellbooks. It is also alleged that in the Testament of Solomon, Solomon makes it very clear that his god, the god that he worships, is Moloch. Of course, Moloch is the same god today that a lot of our leaders worship, as mentioned in some emails that were released a while ago. Now, last week, we talked about the term Salamic magic. Salamic magic, named after King Solomon, is specifically assigned to the magic of summoning demons. So someone who is a light worker who does rituals to protect themselves and protect their loved ones is not practicing Salamic magic. This is, again, specifically for people who are summoning demons. Salamic magic is also considered high magic. So not something that little pipsqueaks who've just joined the dark arts are doing, but the more advanced people, maybe the people who run the covens. This type of Salamic magic includes really two things, an invocation, a calling of the demon, and a conjuring, which for lack of a better term, is you making a pact with a demon. Now, something that I found particularly interesting in my research into the Grand Grimoire is that many demonologists do understand that demons are way more complex than angels. If you follow along in the biblical story, we know that the Bible teaches that demons are actually fallen angels. And this makes sense to me because... As I've said over and over again, the darkness can't create anything, only the light can. So even these demons were created by God as angels. But they took the opportunity to use their God-given free will, as we all have, to challenge God. And therefore, they fell into the spectrum of darkness, which is needed for the polarity of a third density planet. These demons, because they are not mortal like humans, have all of the same abilities that angels have. This is because they were at one point angels. And because they were at one point angels, they themselves also had a direct relationship with God. Now, just like human beings that participate in the dark arts or black magic, demons will also mess with your head. Because as I've said multiple times, one of the number one rules of the universe is consent and free will. We all have free will, but free will isn't free will if we're not consenting. And we know that the darkness will oftentimes gaslight trick and control to try to give us 
an illusion of something being imaginary. So therefore we consent to something without totally understanding what we have consent to. You know, people often think, and I, I myself have definitely seen demons before. I mean, I've been attacked, physically attacked by them. And when I see them, I see them in their actual physical form, the darkness, the grossness, the red eyes. But I think that's because I know who they are and they know I know who they are. But a lot for a lot of people, and especially for people who don't understand the power of black magic, demons and people who succumb to demons through their witchery will be very alluring. They will say the right things. They will charm you. They will love bomb you. They will do things like control your YouTube channel, making your numbers appear different than they are so that you feel like you need them. This is tricking you into giving your consent. As JCK said so eloquently in her video, a lot of really good people, really good truthers who just opened up a channel because they wanted to do the right thing, they wanted to share knowledge, have now fallen victim to infiltrators who work for the controllers in these covens and are put on platforms to sway our ascension. They fall for it. They have these people come on their channels. And before they know it, these people have taken over their channels and are now technically their handlers. The audience also becomes spellbound and hypnotized by these people, claiming that these people are amazing and they're idolizing and hero worshiping when that should never happen anyway. And that is when it's up to the individual person to do his or her own work to use discernment, to understand where perhaps they're being tricked. And a lot of us can understand that because for many, many years, a lot of us were victims to the trickery of the mainstream media to our educational system, to medicine. And so we have to understand that the same tactics are also being used in this war as well. Both angels and demons are shapeshifters. They know how to change their form in order to do whatever it is that they need to do. But one thing I wanna be very clear about as well so that people are not living in the low vibration of fear is that demons don't just gallivant around the world looking to mess with people like the church wants you to believe. Of course, the church wants you to believe that because most churches are in cahoots with Satanism. But you see, demons are a little bit too cocky for that. Demons have to be summoned. They have to be summoned by a dark witch or warlock. There has to be a pact made with that dark witch or warlock. And then there has to be an intention set, a tagging set on the victim that they're going after. As JCK said in her video, a lot of these infiltrators, these dark witches will go on their channel and they will target people by talking about them on their channel, love bombing them, really pointing that channel out. And the next thing you know, you've got some stuff happening in your life that you didn't ask for. You've been tagged. Now, most people watching right now, if you don't have a public platform, you're probably pretty safe from this. And we have to understand that ultimately our free will and our choice is what's in control. And this is why, even though I know for myself in particular, I've had at least three death spells put on me, nothing has happened to me because I am aligned with source. I am protected. I'm heavily protected. And so just because someone's doing black magic on you potentially doesn't mean that it's all is lost. We just have to be aware. Now, these people who are doing these black magic spells, sending demons after particular people have to continue to do the spell work if they want to continue to have that person attacked for whatever reason. Usually in my case specifically, the reason why I have been targeted is because of something in my needle chart, something that I lived through in a past life. And it also has to do with my star chart as well. So there is something about me. I do know what that is that they want, that they want to actually take off of the earth. And so therefore, in saying that, I hope that I'm making some people rest at ease. They're, they're not just doing it for shits and giggles. There's a particular reason. And so if you're not being attacked right now with this type of black magic, then chances are you probably won't be. So just relax, don't worry, and use your discernment. So just like archangels, there are also archdemons. As I said, where there's a Michael, there's a counterpart. Where there's a Gabriel, there's a counterpart. The archdemons are, of course, the most powerful demons. And each archdemon commands his or own legion of demons. As we talked about last week, especially on the Dark Outpost, 
King Baal, Baal, the demon, is also known as Yahweh. But then according to other studies, we have the seven princes of hell. This is Lucifer, who is also associated with pride, Mammon, who is associated with greed, Osmodeus, who is associated with lust, Levithan, who is associated with envy, Beelzebub, who is associated with gluttony, Satan, who is associated with wrath, and Belphegor, who is associated with sloth. Now, for those who grew up in a Christian home, you also probably recognize those seven as the seven deadly sins. But I'm not going to get too much into that because I have a very different um, definition of sin than what the Christian church teaches us. For me, sin means to just miss the mark, to not understand who you truly are. And it is true that in some cultures, demons are also considered demonstrators. They're teachers. If you know how to work that properly, you can actually learn by conquering your own inner demons. But for the case of this study and the spiritual warfare we're in now, we are referring to demons as literal, literal dark entities who are fighting for the negative polarity. Now, something interesting about Leviathan, the demon of envy, is that he is known as a sea serpent. And if you were, were with us for the Necronomicon, you know that the Chitula, the, the deity of the Necronomicon, which is also considered the world's most dangerous book, is a sea serpent. So is the Chitula and Leviathan the same? Possibly. We know that in some of the missing books of the Bible, Lucifer has a different name. For example, in the Apocryphon of John, Lucifer is called Yeldabaoth. In the Lesser Key of Solomon that we covered last week, they talk about the deities, the gods, the demon gods that rule the four corners of the earth. For example, the god of the north is Zeminar. The god of the west is Corson. The god of the south is Gap. And the god of the east is Amayon. Now, the Grand Grimoire, the Mac Daddy of all of King Solomon's spell books, is also referred to as the Red Dragon. This is because this particular Grand Grimoire works with summoning Lucifer himself. The story goes that the Grand Grimoire was actually found in King Solomon's tomb in the year 1750. Now, as always, take this with a grain of salt. If you guys know, I am heavily invested in studying Tartaria right now, and Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa and I are going to be doing a whole series on Tartaria. So I definitely don't take dates that seriously, and I'm, I'm not taking artifacts that seriously either, because we know that the demographics of where these events actually happened are probably not where they tell us they happen. And so... As I'm giving you the information about how it was found, just please take it with a grain of salt and know that this information could change. However, again, yes, the story goes that it was actually found in the tomb of King Solomon. This book, the original copy found in this tomb, allegedly, is now being held at the Vatican Library. Surprise, surprise. That I do believe. However, you can find copies of this spell book online. Now, this spell book allegedly goes into this idea that God, source God, creator God, is not the God of this planet. Lucifer is the God of this planet. This I actually agree with. We know the Bible even says this. If you're following the biblical text, you know that God agreed to allow Lucifer to rule over this prison planet for a particular amount of time. This is what gave human beings, us souls trapped on this gangster prison planet, the opportunity to have the resistance and the, ref and the friction from morality of right and wrong to understand what path we wanted to choose to graduate to, hence why we are literally at the final exam right now. Now, the God that I worship, the source, the creator God, does not ask anything of his children. He doesn't demand atonement. He doesn't de demand that you give up something in order to worship him. There is no condition to source creator God's love. Source creator God gave you your divine spark. You are his child. And he is full of mercy, grace, and abundance of unconditional love. And your soul, that spark, is also a part of that unconditional love. However, when we have Lucifer here on this earth, 
Lucifer will be tempting you with money, with a lot of girls or boys, boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, power, you name it, the earthly possessions, not the heavenly possessions of knowing unconditional love, but the earthly possessions of all the seven deadly sins, greed, everything. And so we know that a lot of our controllers in this world have succumbed to worshiping Lucifer because they're able to harness more power to do what they want by striking packs or deals with Lucifer. And again, they've gotten away with this for such a long time because that was the deal that God, creator God, made with Lucifer in order for us to be able to decide which path we want to go on. Now, even though this is what I agree with with the Grand Grimoire, the Grand Grimoire takes it a little bit further because the logic of this book is that as King Solomon did, as a lot of our leaders did, you should just denounce your creator, source God, and just continue to serve Lucifer so your time on this pr prison planet can be comfortable and lucrative. I know for you guys watching as well as myself, I could not give two shits about how much money a person has. I've, as I've joked before, I've never cared. That's never been something that's entered my head when dating. I've always dated four guys because I've never cared about that. That's not something that's important to me. But for someone who's more psychopathic and doesn't have the same type of compassion or empathy or a person that can't see beyond the physical body into the soul, of course, the idea of having countless money, wealth, fame, power sounds very alluring. But karma, she's a fickle bitch. What you do will eventually come back to you. Now, the grand grimoire, even though the whole purpose of it is to summon the head honcho, Lucifer, it does talk a lot about how the demons are the old gods, the original gods of this planet. This goes back into the idea of the watchers, the fallen angels, who started to mate with the human women in order to create this half-breed of what we then called demigods, people who were half-human, half human half God, they were Nephilim. Now, my understanding is actually, as far as the Nephilim are concerned, there were both good and bad Nephilim too. And so we have to, again, understand this idea of polarity. This whole subject of the watchers mating with humans is something that I'm still a little hazy on because I'm not taking the Bible's total word for it. I want to know more about what actually happened because I also believe that there was crossbreeding between between off-worlders too, that a lot of us, most humans on this planet, don't originate from this planet. In fact, we do know that the 12 tribes of Israel, the original tribes, were not of this earth, but they were rather galactic tribes who created and cross-created the beings of this planet. Now, in the Lesser Key of Solomon, it is spoken about 72 demons. But in the Grand Grimoire, that number is flipped and it's spoken about 27 demons. Now, I personally have not read the Grand Grimoire. I've just listened to people's commentary on it and read articles on it. I don't want to read it. I There's a point with this research when it comes to researching these books that I will draw the line and stop because I do take this, this stuff very, very seriously. And I don't want to unintentionally invite something in that I don't want in. My whole point of understanding these books is simply that, just to understand understand them so that I have the power and the knowledge to not fall victim to the workings of these grimoires or spellbooks. Now, according to the Grand Grimoire, when summoning Lucifer, you are working within these 27 demons and the four demons that run these 27 demons. The four demons that run the 27 demons are like your middleman. They're the hierarchy that you will communicate with in order to eventually get to Lucifer. These are, and I apologize if I do not say these names correctly. There is one name I know I'm going to say correctly, though. These are Ardnu, Elohim, Jehovah, and Ariel. Yes, you heard me correctly. One of them is called Jehovah. No shit, guys. We, we have to start questioning everything. We now know that Yahweh is not the creator God, that's Baal. And now we understand that Jehovah is a demon that rules the underworld and is in direct communication with Lucifer. And if you go through the ritual of summoning Lucifer, you're going to have to then sell your soul to Lucifer, just like King Solomon did, just like I believe a lot of the people in the Old Testament did. Because as we're starting to see, the Old Testament, the God of the Old Testament is not 
is not the good God. It's, it's the Lucifer. As we end this discussion, the one thing I do want to point out that uh, my friend Cindy has pointed out before, and that the Grand Grimoire and the Key of Solomon points out is that anytime you do magic, any type of magic, whether it's for the good or for the bad, you yourself are the conduit. You yourself are the channeler of energy. It's just like if you ever have a Reiki treatment, you can feel the energy coming from the practitioner's hands. They're channeling that through them. Well, the same again for the darkness. And so for everybody who practices black magic, every spell they cast, every bad deed, every curse or hex they do to someone by summoning a demon, they have to run it through themselves first. This is why they have to then counter this by doing other practices, such as the drinking of particular substances. Over time, the black magic takes a toll on the practitioner. I've heard that many people, especially in the truther community, who are working for these controllers who are in these covens are now starting to actually show signs of it on camera. If you look closely, allegedly, you can see their eyes shifting to reptilian eyes. You see their teeth start to change to more sharp and pointed fangs. Now, I don't watch any of these people at all. In fact, I have the ones that I know are bad, I have actually blocked um, on my YouTube. So I have not watched anything in five months, but I have been sent many, many emails with pictures of this happening from people who are noticing it. And again, this is just another warning. If you mess with black magic, you have to actually be the conduit for that black magic. And how sucky would it be if you were the person sending spells to me and nothing had worked? I'm still alive and you're losing your teeth. So just remember guys, the devil always comes to collect. Yes, sometimes black magic will work for a moment and you'll be the person who everybody thinks is fantastic and wonderful, but eventually the mask falls and the truth will always come to light. For what's done in the dark will always be brought to the light. All right, guys, thank you so much for sitting through that. Please leave me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Once again, all the links I mentioned in this video will be in the description box. Please be kind to each other. I know this is a very, very sensitive topic. Um, I'm just going to start blocking people that are asking me for a name. As I said in the beginning of this video, this my life has been put at stake and I'm doing the best I can to warn you guys and talk about this in an in a educational way so that you know what to look for, so that you can trust your own discernment. By me saying a name, I'm literally signing my own death warrant. So if you're selfish enough to want the gossip and not care about the safety of all of us, and it's not just me who have been attacked, then I will just block you from my channel because that's that type of behavior is not going to be okay. You don't need a name. You have a connection to God. You have your own discernment. And this is not a gossip channel. This is an educational channel. We're trying to figure things out together. The, the people who have been doing aggressive spell work against me for five months are still out there. They're still doing their thing. And so I, again, have to be very, very careful. I have had a lot of help from whistleblowers who grew up in these groups that have come out of the word work to help me. I have filled out affidavits. Um, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that that you guys don't know about that I will definitely tell you about once I can, once it's safe to. In fact, one day I hope to actually write a book about this whole experience because, wow, what what an experience it has been. But for now, please just trust that if I were to say a name or anybody else who's being attacked were to say a name, it could literally put our lives at risk. And so I need for you guys to truly understand that and understand that there has been a lot of blood involved in this. I have had a lot of physical assaults with this. And I just need for you guys to understand the severity. And, and, and if you're not being attacked right now, great. Don't worry about it. There's probably, you're probably flying under the radar. And I want to also point out that, as I said, with black magic, that you are the conduit, all these dark witches and sorcerers, just like us only have a certain amount of energy. Okay, they're not out there just randomly casting spells on people. It's a very, very, very targeted thing. It is very highly organized. And so if you have been targeted, you will know 
because they will be saying your name on shows a lot. There will be tagging. I was tagged by a bigger channel. That is a channeling channel. I was tagged on that channel. I've also had help from an insider. There is a person who is an infiltrator to the infiltrator that is a part of their coven who has been in contact with me. And I'm very grateful. That's how I know a lot of things going on. Once again, I have filled out some affidavits for um, higher ups. So this is very serious, guys. This is not just speculation about people not liking each other. In fact, personally, for me, one of the main participating members of this coven was someone that I considered to be a friend of mine that I loved and promoted. She had targeted me and tagged me on her shows before I started filming with her. And it was through this that I was shown what I needed to see. And now knowledge is power. Now I know exactly what's going on. And so just understand guys that this is literal spiritual warfare. This is not a reality show. This is not staged. There's no scripts. This is not a movie. This is literal spiritual warfare. We are on one of the biggest battlefields we've ever been in in our lives. So please, please, please have respect for people like me, like JCK, others uh, who have been attacked. If they're not saying a name, there's a really good reason why. And understand that their safety is at stake. And we are giving you enough information that we have, that we've learned in order for you to have that knowledge so that you can listen to your own discernment and make your own decisions. On top of that, I never want to take your free will away from you. I would never say a name anyway, even if my life wasn't at stake at this point before arrests are made, I would not even... Because you need to make that choice about who you want to follow. I can't be the one following the leader is what got us in this shit storm to begin with. We gave our sovereignty up to the media. We listened to what the news said. We gave our sovereignty up to medicine. We gave our sovereignty up to higher educational systems. We have to stop following the leader. We have to stop this game of Simon Says. You are are a unique soul that has your own spiritual DNA. You have a brain that functions. You have a gut that is totally connected to source. You don't need me to tell you who not to watch, nor would I ever do that because that is your free will. That is your choice. If I were to do that, even if this was not a serious situation, if I were to do that before arrests were made, I would be doing the exact same thing as the controllers do. You are your own individual person. You make your own decisions about who you watch and who you follow. I don't need to tell you who to watch or who to follow. You decide that. You have that power. Just please be patient and please understand that this is, this is serious. All right, guys. I hope you're having a wonderful start to a week. It's been we're in a really rough time right now, but we're going to get through it. And this too shall pass. And please know that some of the best days of your life haven't even happened yet. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.